Hello guys, Panzermeister 36 here. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a review and demonstration of this. I picked this up at my hobby store. As you can see, it was only $6, and this is made by Trumpeter, I believe. And it's basically a sheet of Zimmerit. Very, very thin, flexible. So you're supposed to kind of, as they show here, if you're doing a tank that needs Zimmerit, you can kind of trace and cut out the panels, and then just kind of stick them onto your tank. And they're very, very thin, so they should be able to curve to surfaces easily. And I'm just going to kind of test it out because it was super cheap, only 6 bucks. It's about the same as, like, you know, a single paint at my hobby store. So, I mean, it's my, by Master Tools, but I believe it's part of Trumpeter or something like that. Yeah, he, it's Trumpeter over here. So, I show a couple vehicles on here and they give you a basic um, broken English explanation of what they want you to do. For this, I have a tiger here. This is a dragon tiger that has very nice zimmert on it. But there's a section on the front where there's been, uh, where they basically could mold it on the side of an armored plate. So I'm going to use some of this stuff to fill that plate, and we're just going to kind of see how it works. I've sliced off a small section here. It's a lot bigger than what I actually need for that little spot on the tiger. And it, this is actually super, super thin. And looking at the back, it has like a negative pattern on the rear. So I think what they've done actually is this isn't molded. This has been like pressed. That's why the, the back has like the negative of the of the front. But it is very, very thin and very flexible. And I know one of my friends, he was building a one of those Meng Toon tanks. He's building the Tiger and he wanted to put Zimmert on it. Oops. And what he did was he uh, he used this as the Zimmert to apply to it. And he said it was very, very easy to make it bend and stick over the round rear of the Tiger turret. So looking at this also, like this, this is not going to be any issue to get it to, to conform to a at least a, a very large curve. At smaller details is going to be a little bit tricky and you're going to have to use putty there because this doesn't really you know, fit into like little gaps and stuff. But what I'm using this for is like an overall kind of fill job for a large area. So I've just gotten started and I've used a little bit as you can see here. And so far it's going well but not that well. And the reason for that is if you look at the pattern and compare the trumpeter sheet to the tiger, the trumpeter sheet is like 30% larger, at least the gaps between each kind of row of Zimmerit marks. It's a lot larger on this than it is on that. So what I'm having to do actually is basically cut out each strip. Like basically take two thirds of that, make, cut a little square, stick it on, discard the rest, and then so on. And it's, I mean, it's taking more time than if I were just to cut out the whole thing. But actually it's going pretty quick so far, so. We're just going to continue with that and see how it goes. All right, guys, so it's been, I believe, less than five minutes to actually do all that chopping and and work there, which isn't bad considering that, you know, I had to do a lot of cutting. And as I said before, it would have been faster if I could have just cut one big rectangle out and slapped it on the front plate there. But actually, it, it was pretty quick. I got a rhythm going and I just chopped them all up and, and stuck them in place. And it looks, I mean, it, now, the, now the actual, the, the width between each column of Zimmerit matches basically perfectly with the Dragon pre-molded Zimmerit. And I'm going to zoom you in because in doing each section individually by cutting them out as little squares, I've actually got almost by accident, I guess, a randomness to it because, you know, the edges I cut weren't exactly square. So some of these are a little bit angled side to side, very slightly. And, you know, it's a little more random looking and it matches better with the stuff up here the Dragon's given us already molded onto the plastic. Basically the Trumpeter Zimmerich sheet doesn't have very much depth to it, especially compared to the super thick, arguably over thick <laughs> Dragon pre-molded Zimmerit. So I'm just going to use my hobby knife and just kind of scrape out the um, just below the ridges kind of and make the troughs deeper on the pre-molded section. And then I'm going to take my Tamiya Thin Cement and then I can use that to kind of soak and 
deform the plastic and then just kind of poke around with my knife and make it a little more messy. You can already probably see a little bit of that kind of over there. Really, I'm just trying to make it look less perfect and make it match the stuff that's already up here. Alright guys, I have finished the Zimmern application and also the randomizing of it. And I've also painted over with some blue paint here. The blue paint is just because, you know, when you're filling a gap or something like that or a hole in our hobby, you're not exactly sure what it actually, how your texture actually looks until you've painted over it to unify it with the rest of the tank. That's why I painted blue, just so I can compare it better to the Zimmer that's pre-molded. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see. And I think it actually looks not that bad at all. I think that when I was doing the adding of depth to the Zimmer in the middle there, I went a little too far. So it's a little bit deeper there than everywhere else, but especially on the ends, like about there and there, it blends very nicely with the rest of the Zimmer. So I'm very happy with that. And the areas where it's a little too deep there, I expect that when I apply a pin wash to this tank eventually, then that will help to unify the depth with the rest of it by just making it look visually like it blends together a little, little bit more. So. So I'm basically done there and I'm pretty happy with the results. Now as for the product, of course this is a kind of review so I need to go back to the product. I would recommend this product basically on the sole um, fact or, uh, factor that it's super cheap. This sheet was 6 bucks Canadian which is about 450 US, which is roughly the same amount of money as an evergreen sheet of plain untextured plastic that's about the same size. If this product were like 20 bucks or something like that, I would not recommend it because it's not worth it. And the reason for that is I would not actually recommend doing what they've done here and using this to like basically zimmer your entire tank because it's going to take a lot of time cutting out these things from this blank slate. You're going to have to do a lot of work randomizing and making the texture looks not uniform and it's just going to take so much time that at that point you might as well just be doing it entirely by hand with putty. If you're going to be doing like if you're going to be doing this kind of method where you're cutting out sections and pasting them on your tank to give it zimmer, you might as well buy an ATAC resin zimmer set, which I've used and are very great, or even better, the Tamiya ones, because those are they they give you guides to cut. I think some of the Tamiya ones might even be pre-cut, but I'm not exactly sure. But they at least give you lines to so you can just trace it out yourself, and the pattern is is already kind of random and looks natural. This stuff is way too uniform and looks unnatural. You know, in our hobby, you need to be a little bit random to give it actual natural handmade look. Like, same thing when you're doing camouflage patterns or anything like that. Zimmer, it's the same thing. So that's what I recommend this product is for. I wouldn't recommend it for an entire tank, but I recommend having a sheet on hand, basically, because it's only like six bucks. You might as well just buy a sheet when you have the chance, and you can have it around whenever you need it. And then if you're doing a tank like this, where you need to fill in gaps in the Zimmer, or you're doing, you know, a, a set where you're using like an ATAC resin sheet and there's a couple of gaps, areas where you're missing some Zimmerit. You can use this stuff to fill it in. And since you're only doing small areas, you can afford to put the time and effort into kind of uh, fine tuning it with some putty or a knife or whatever I did here to make it match the rest of the Zimmerit. If you're doing that in the entire tank, it's going to take way too much time. It's not going to be worth it. Maybe also you're doing a, like a Panzer IV and there's like a, you're adding a side skirt that's from a different tank. Sometimes on Panzer IVs they had Zimmerit and side skirts, so you could add a zimmered side skirt, change the camo up a little bit, and then that would emphasize that 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 you're trying to make um, like a field rep repaired vehicle where it has a zimmered from, uh, sorry, a side skirt from a different tank that is zimmered on it. So that's kind of what I think this product would be good for. Great for just giving you an, an initial roadmap where you can put some more effort in and basically fill in the gaps wherever you need it. That's what this stuff is good for. So I think I'll leave it at that. You guys have seen me do this little project here. Adding some zimmer there, as you saw, it was pretty straightforward. I had to put a little bit of extra work in there, cutting it into smaller sections to make it match, and also doing a little bit more work afterwards, making it more random. But still, it took about 10 minutes, and it was really useful. It gave me a better result than I would have got with putty, because I don't have any good putty for it in the first place. I would have been using Tamiya putty, it would have been a disaster. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
Hope you guys um, maybe got an idea to pick up a new product. Trumpeter didn't send this to me. I picked it up myself, so I'm not biased or anything. But I, I honestly do suggest that if you ever see this and it's at a decent price, just pick it up because it's something great to have on hand if you ever need it. Since it's so cheap, it's not really a waste of money regardless. So, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you learned something new. As always, thanks for watching and huge thanks to the Patreon and PayPal supporters. Those guys give me a little bit of money, which helps me buying Pinkton products for you guys seeing videos. Like, for example, the Zimmerich sheet. So, huge thanks to them especially. And I guess I'll see you next time. Maybe next week if I have time for a video then. As always, happy modeling and goodbye.